Hey, it's uh, it's Dave, and you're watching Harpoon Dreams. Thank you for watching. Um, this channel has always been, it's not monetized, and um, I just do this channel to uh, record my experiences and help people who own harpoons have some good video to look at, because I was frustrated. There wasn't enough really good video of people sailing harpoons or boats like harpoons. Uh, big dinghies that are fast and um, anyway I also hope that people learn things from it and learn how to do things and are motivated by the videos to go out and sail their harpoon instead of leaving it in the garage and not working on it or whatever uh, this channel has always been partly a how-to and also perhaps more so, uh, how not to do things. Uh, I've always been pretty open with my mistakes and today was a big one. Um, I went out today with no wind. Hey there, it's People Dave. were sailing past me, coming in things. saying, don't, don't bother uh, going out there. There's absolutely no video, wind. But, um, but I toughed it out. I, I did a lot of sculling at first. I, I was recording it. I was streaming it here on Facebook and, um, it got to the point after about an hour and a half, it was the most boring Facebook stream that I could ever imagine because there was almost no wind. And I, after about an hour and a half, I had only maybe 10 or 15 minutes of me actually sailing because there was enough wind to move the boat. I was avoiding one very localized storm that was passing over one part of the county. And in the video, you'll see how I actually turned away from it and it was sunny and bright skies, puffy clouds where I was. Uh, and then I shut off all my cameras and um, I mean, I, I had so little wind, even though there was lightning over there on the other side of the county. Uh, I had so little wind where I was that turning away from the storm, I was almost stuck, unable to run away, but I wasn't in a storm, so it was all good. And then suddenly the winds picked up where I was, and another different cell came over, and um, I sailed, I immediately turned around, and I said, well, I'm just going to sail back downwind straight to harbor right, and put this boat away. I'm not going to sail in this. I think it's and, um, day, but we'll see. Now the harpoon manual tells you, yeah, I go. think pretty sure it tells you, you know, when you're sailing downwind, lift your centerboard because it's a liability and the boat could capsize if the centerboard is down and you are running downwind or reaching downwind. So, I, as I was turning around, I raised my centerboard. And I don't know what happened. It wasn't an accidental jibe. Um, I don't really understand it. Uh, talk, we'll talk about that in another episode, exactly what happened. But unfortunately, my cameras weren't running. So, I mean, I, I, it would be painful to look at. But I was kind of hoping that maybe I could learn from it. Maybe you could learn from it. But that boat flipped over so fast. I mean, it wasn't, there was not even a struggle. Um, there was no, oh no, I, I think I'm in trouble or I'm losing control of the boat. It was just one minute I was turning downwind, letting out the sail. And the next minute I was underwater under the sail. And so um, that was a little scary, but I had just enough time to take a huge breath before I went under and um, didn't get tangled in any ropes or shrouds or or the main sheet is what will really scares me found I was able to find my way out from under the um, mainsail and with plenty of time to breathe but it was a little scary the problem is as soon as you know I thought well the first thing I need to do is go stand on that centerboard Oh, I don't have a centerboard because I raised it. I oh, within two seconds, the boat had completely turtled uh, and was never going to come up again. So, um, 
And also, by the time I realized any of this, I was like in a different universe with hail and rain, intense winds. Um, it was like I it was like I came out of the water in a different county with different weather. It was completely bizarre. All right, but I want to thank a lot of people came to my aid. I mean, people were really great. There were strangers on pontoon boats nearby, fellow yacht club members circling to make sure I was okay. Uh, Travis County Sheriff's showed up real quick and they kind of got me out of the water and told everyone else to get out of the water and stay clear. Another municipality, uh, some other municipality cops showed up. I'm not really sure who they were. I wish I knew they wore brown uniforms, um, but they, I don't think they were Travis County Sheriff's. They were a different, different posse. Since I filmed the last segment on the dock, uh, I, I realized a few things, and I, we need to talk about what not to do. Even before this happens to you, what not to do. So for starters, I'm, I'm now, I got religion from a few different people. Do not raise your centerboard, it, especially if you're single-handed. Do not raise, just leave it down always. Upwind, downwind, sideways, just leave your centerboard down all the way. Unless you're gonna hit bottom. I wanna get away from this point Second, of land um, because A, it's shallow. All your B, gear. It's a dead zone, so I'm gonna um, skull my way through. A lot of stuff's path. waterproof nowadays, but it sinks. Okay. See. So gear needs to if it doesn't need to be in a dry bag, that's fine, but your bag needs to be closed and that bag needs to be tied in place or secured somehow. I lost a lot of equipment today because I leave my go bag half open right inside the cuddy with two GoPros in there, uh, my I? favorite shirts and stuff like that, a lot of clothing. Um, you know, I just I I wish I hadn't done that. I wish I had all my stuff secured uh, by ropes is, or whatever like you this. do to secure things, uh, bags in a boat. I just, uh, you know, I regret that it's that was like that. I uh, never imagined that this was going to happen, especially today. What else? Uh, you have an anchor on your boat? Really? Yeah. Does it need to be tied at every minute? Because after we got back to the dock today, I realized why couldn't we pull the boat away from it in, in a very deep water? Why couldn't, why, what was dragging? Uh, and why did the mask get caught on something and snap in half in deep water? Uh, how come when we got to water that was maybe 20 or 30 feet deep, the mast was already broken and dragging behind the boat? What were we stuck on? I realized when we got back and we righted the boat, I had my anchor tied on about 25 to 30 feet of line in the anchor locker, but it was tied to the bow. That serves no purpose whatsoever. And when the boat flips over, that anchor, it's an anchor, right? It's gonna catch, even if your rig is dragging behind the boat and you're only yeah, gonna, taking up 10 feet or five feet of water, that anchor is gonna drag and catch at 30 feet or 40 feet. What a nightmare that was today. Cause we didn't know what we were hitting. And also, that may be the reason that the mast also. snapped in half because the anchor may have caught something in deeper water land, and it may have yanked on the mast as the boats were trying to pull the boat. We couldn't right it either. That may have contributed to why we couldn't right the boat because the anchor was holding it down. So we didn't realize till after the boat was righted that I, we were dragging an anchor all the way across the lake. Uh, my fault, I guess. It never occurred to me to think about the anchor in the anchor locker right, so in the front of the boat pack. that I haven't touched in six months. The so. question is, will I go anywhere? Wow. Uh, anyway, I here's the video. Enjoy how not to sail a harpoon. Thanks I for can. tuning in.
pretty sure there will definitely be more lightning there. Right out there. It's a very slow moving storm. Very isolated and slow moving. In fact, perhaps because of that storm, I'm gonna tack away again. So, we're ready about, and Holmes the Lee. going to be a bad hour or two if you live over there. Beautiful though, isn't it? You see that? It's beautiful, isn't it? I'm not sure why I thought that going two miles an hour away from the storm would matter to anything, but I just didn't want to be over there. I didn't want to keep going in that direction at three miles an hour. So now I'm going this direction in one mile an hour. <laughs> that ought to save me. Now, I don't think we're uh, anywhere near where any lightning is gonna hit us or even any high winds. This gotta be the most boring. This gotta be the most boring uh, Facebook Live ever. I'm done with that. Thanks for tuning in. It's Dave. Um, I just turned off my uh, streaming video earlier because it was so boring because there was no wind and it must have been, I said it must have been the most boring streaming video ever created. It was an hour of me looking for wind where there was none. And as you can see now, there is wind. And uh, I'll tell you more about this later, but you can see that my boat is an absolute wreck. And you Yes, what happened. Um, I, I don't know how to explain it. Uh, I saw a storm coming up and I went to turn downwind and I did as the manual says for the harpoon. I lifted my centerboard. Maybe I lifted it too much. And before I could even react to whatever it was that happened that I still don't understand, I was underwater and the boat was capsized and I was under the mainsail. You can see it's all a mess there. And uh, when I came up, it was like, I, first of all, I was lucky to get out, out from under the mainsail. At that, at that moment, it was all cool. I, I had taken a big deep breath before I fell out of the boat. And um, I went to go look for the centerboard to keep it from turtling. Of course, there was no centerboard because I had pulled it up and it had fallen inside. I couldn't get it out. 
even though it wasn't pleated, I couldn't get my fingers in there to get it out. So I had no centerboard to keep the boat from turtling to grab onto. Um, so that was my first capsize. The towing posse from the Austin Yacht Club showed up, my fellow members of the Austin Yacht Club, thankfully. And they're the ones that were really the most helpful and towed the boat upside down. We couldn't ride it where it was for whatever reason. We towed the boat upside down over to here which is the austin yacht club south cove and finally we were able to write it out at the mouth of the cove over there and um then we um i was able to survey i lost so much equipment today it's not even funny but somehow miraculously my cell phone wasn't lost even though it was in a holder inside the cuddy just on the edge of the cuddy inside it came out of the holder upside down but somehow, I guess it stayed in the cuddy, and when the boat was righted, it was on the floor of the boat. My wife found it. So, you know, that's a great thing. But I lost a whole bunch of equipment, but I'm just thankful to be alive because there was a couple moments where uh, I really thought uh, this is the end for me. As you can see, my mast is broken right in half, but that's okay because my mast was already twisted and they said, well, you can just splice it. People splice masks all the time. And I was like, why would I splice something that was already faulty? Later on in another video, when I understand better what happened, it wasn't an accidental jibe. This is my first capsize, and I'm really thankful to the people at the Austin Yacht Club that rescued me and the strangers on pontoon boats that tried to help me and everyone else. Um, the Travis County Sheriff's, uh, some municipality police organization, I don't know who they were, in another boat. Uh, I'm just thankful to everyone that tried to help me. And I'm, to, to be honest, I'm thankful to be alive. And I don't, I don't like to dramatize things, but I was under the sails twice today. Once when I went over, and once when the boat got righted. Somehow, I tried to swim out of the way, but somehow I ended up wrapped up in the jib underwater. And I really thought this is, this is my end. This is where it's, I'm done, right here. But um, I had no air and I was tangled up in the jib. But somehow I was able to get out. I fought my way out, but um, yeah, I'm just happy to be alive. I could care less about all the GoPros that I lost today and all the equipment or the mast is broken. I don't, I don't really give a crap. But anyway, the boat's still intact. I'm thankful the rudder, did you know that did you know that harpoon rudders float? <laughs> that was the first thing I saw floating about 20 feet from the boat and I rescued it. And also I'm really thankful that this hardware right here that I worked on the other day didn't bust apart the boat. Uh, I'm kind of thankful about that because um, I thought that might have been the first thing that busted apart. All right, my wife's waiting for me. I'm gonna get the boat on a trailer and go park it. Uh, thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.